Hey up mid ducks, welcome back to the channel. Leicester vs Wolves, King Power Stadium, Sunday, 2 p.m. Live on the channel. The watch along at 1.40. We go live on the channel. Previews here. I've got Talking Wolves with their perspective on the game as well coming up in the show. Uh, look, Wolves, Leicester 0 0. Last two games not been the best, to be honest with you. But don't forget that massive game between the two sides, 4 3. Was that's that's the one that's the talking point between the games there um, over the last probably what two years and nil nil again before that as well in 2018. So apart from the one mad game, it's been nil nil. So I'm going to go straight into my prediction, which is going to be one one. I'm going to go for a, a one one uh, against Wolves at the King Power. I know Leicester have, have been on form, but. I just, I don't know, they're very similar sides and I think they'll cancel each other out at the weekend. Um, and for the lineup of the game, I think I'm going to go with a Kasper Schmeichel in goal, Fuchs, Justin and Fafana centre-backs with wing-backs of Thomas and Albrighton again. Uh, depending on Evans' fitness or not, uh, you will see James Justin probably playing in the role of Mark Albrighton. Uh, Mendy and Tillemans in the middle with Madison potentially going right if Under isn't match fit to start because he still looks a little doubtful to me, King as Under as a complete 90-minute player. Um, but if that is the case, if he does start, it will be on the right with Madison on the left. If not, Madison goes right and Barnes comes in on left. That's how I see it with Jamie Vardy up top. Top. That's how I see it. And also, don't forget the press conference has happened. Brendan Rogers' press conference today mentioned about Johnny Evans. He should be available as long as there is no reaction. He trained very well today. So there you go. He's, tra he's been training and he's fine. He we are hopeful that Johnny Evans will start on Sunday. Uh, Madison's fit and it's good to go. Although he got cl oh, he got clattered, didn't he? Uh, at, the at the weekend? We at the weekend on Thursday with Braga. He got absolutely clattered. The amount of times that kid got brought down is unbelievable. Uh, he's pleased with the squad depth as well, Brendan Rodgers, considering we got hammered for injuries over the course of the, uh, well, during the pandemic really, since the start of the pandemic all the way up to right now. We've got so many players out and, and more happening, you know. Look at uh, Castagna, he's still out as well with a hamstring. Won't be back until after the international break, but he's very happy with the way that we've won. It's a testament to the guys that have come in and how they've performed at a really high level. They're a group of a great spirit we lost a couple of games but they learned from that and I've played some fantastic football with the Premier League you have to have humility because no matter how well you're doing you've always got a tough game coming up next that's what we're looking forward to against Wolves so Brendan's very he's very optimistic against Wolves Soyun Chu on the other hand with the uh, the injury we've already discussed on the channel before with the tear to his abductor muscle uh, it literally tore it off of the bone um, weeks away uh, says Rogers is weeks away before training again. He didn't need the operation. Uh, he's doing flexibility work, but not kicking a ball yet. We're hopeful that he'll be back before Christmas. So there you go. There's the update on uh, Soyuncu, Kagala Soyuncu. Barnes and uh, him being up, being ignored for England and the, uh, the international break not being picked by Gareth Southgate. Uh, I haven't spoken to him yet. He's come in as normal. He started the season very well and having met up with the groups, it will prove a great motivation for him. He's continued to play well, but he knows that it's not his job. He just needs to perform well for Leicester City. He's a player that the national team don't have so much in that he's so direct in his running. There will be other squads for him to be involved in at other time in his career. Mm. So there you go. Brendan Rodgers upping uh, Harvey Bonds there, probably giving him a little bit of motivation. Uh, he's pleased as well for Connor Cody as well because obviously uh, Brendan Rodgers coached him as a youngster. Um, I won't go into that too much, but uh, how do experienced players like Jamie Vardy and Kasper Schmeichel help this side? Firstly, it's about behaviour. When players are experienced, they come in and have a way to prepare. They get in early and get themselves right for training and then they give everything the young players here are very, very fortunate. Looking from afar, Morgan or Brighton, Fuchs, they have real authority around the place. They're real leaders. Uh, you don't have so many leaders nowadays, but I've got lots. That they'll, they'll talk to the young players and tell them, if you're clever as a young player, you'll pick that up along your career. So, Roger's very confident with the experience that we've got in this Leicester side. Um, I'm going to get Talking Wolves in now as well and, uh, and see what they've got to say about the game.
Hey guys, it's Dave from Talking Wolves. Lee's just asked me to answer a few questions ahead of the game uh, between Leicester and Wolves this weekend. Going to be a really, really interesting uh, tie. Um, so how do I rate Wolves start to the season? I think it has been a bit of a... A uh, bit of a strange one, really. You know, we 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 started off with a win against Sheffield United. We we had a couple of bad uh, results, um, and unfortunately, a lot of fans weren't too happy with that start. Um, you know, it was a little bit up and down. I think fans weren't too impressed with the way that we were playing. But the last month has been fantastic. You know, we we've had an unbeaten month. Um, wins against Fulham. Wins against Leeds. Wins against. Uh, most recently, Crystal Palace. We did have a pretty disappointing draw against Newcastle United, but as a whole, we're doing okay. We're in a very, very good position in the league. Um, in terms of Leicester being in the Europa League as well, with us, with Wolves being in the Europa League last season, I think Leicester can adapt to it quite well. I think they've got a really, really strong team. They've had some great results. The one against Braga, who were a team that Wolves played twice and didn't beat at all last season. So I think that's a, a big result for you guys. Um, as well, and I think you've got the depth to sort of cope with that. It's good to see, you know, the, the likes of Ian Acho getting a lot more game time and, and scoring goals as well from an outsider. But I think a lot of people outside of, of Leicester and probably pundits and stuff will be worried about um, maintaining the fitness and so on. But I think it's more about momentum. The fact that Leicester are coming off the back of beating teams like Braga on a Thursday and, and having that high morale and just going into Sunday, yeah, the players' condition might be a little bit low, but that momentum will take them through, trust me. Uh, we played Besiktas last season, got a 91st, 92nd minute winner against them in Turkey, and went to Etihad just two days later and smash city so it was it was a great feeling but i think that was more due to momentum and, and game plan was just perfect uh, for that sort of scenario um which walls players have performed well this season jimenez again has started off quite brightly had a couple of quiet games but just when he's on it and when we need a goal he's the right place the right man at the right time um, Daniel Pudenza, Pedro Neto, I think have surprised and made everyone a little bit happy um, on the wings. Uh, Adama Traore just can't get a start at the moment, but those two have just been very, very solid for Wolves, really. So I'm happy with that. And they're the, they're the two or three players, really, that have started off quite strongly for Wolves and started off uh, quite well. Um, in terms of how Wolves like to play and how I'd expect us to play, we, we like a back five, uh, simple as that's never changed under Neo for three centre backs and, and two wing backs, two central midfielders, two wingers, and a striker this year. So, sort of like a 3 4 3 or a 5 2 3, sort of. So, yeah, I think um, we, we, we're doing okay with that. We're happy with that. We like to counter-attack. So we may start, especially in the first moments of the game, quite deep and try and sort of suss Leicester out and go for it on the break. Um, but in terms of score prediction as well, I always like to back my own team. So I will go with a 2-1 Wolves win. But I've got to say, it is going to be a really, really tricky game. Um, Leicester have got some big players. And like I say, that momentum from the Europa League will not make this easy for Wolves. But best of luck on Sunday, guys. Uh, and may the best team win. Make sure you go over to Talking Wolves on YouTube and hit the subscribe button over there as well. I'll drop their channel in the description of the video. That about sums it up. I'm going to go one-one though. Uh, all in all, I'm, I, I don't feel anything about. I don't feel. I don't feel like we're going to beat them. I don't feel like they'll beat us. I think we're going to cancel each other out. It's as simple as that. Please uh, like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. And I shall see you all on Sunday at 1:40 here on the channel. Two o'clock kickoff. Leicester Wolves at the King Power. Come. Come on, Leicester. Come on, you foxes. Get in. Come on.